Right, Mr. Palmer, uh, third video for CPU performance. This one's the A-level one, okay? So uh, you should have gone through the two previous videos for your AS on cache, clock speed, and cores, and then uh, word size, and the impact of bus width, address bus, and data bus. This video is about pipelining, and looking at what the advantage of using pipelining is. You, if you can basically answer the second question when pipelining fails, then you have a great in-depth understanding of actually how pipelining is working for your A-level, right? So what is the purpose of a CPU? It's to fetch, decode, and execute instructions. I think I've said this three times now across the three videos, all right? You should just know that definition like that. None of this, uh, it's the brain of a computer type rubbish. That's the kind of crap you say when you're like 10 years old, okay? So if you remember, uh, the CPU during a fetch decode execute cycle is going to request data or instructions from the RAM via the address bus. So they're going to say, give me whatever's at this address. And then whatever is at that address, the value is returned via the data bus. Okay. Within the CPU, there are many uh, components. Okay. Each uh, part of the fetch decode and execute cycle is making use of the different components at different points. So that means at any particular stage, right a number of components are going to be sitting idle we're going to come back to this in a minute and by the way you just you should actually just memorize those flow diagrams and just know what they are okay now imagine i have a company basically that produces model cars i've got three employees okay each employee is tasked with producing a car at a time right so they're all making the complete car that's actually an inefficient way of working will be better if i put them on a production line so the first person responsible for producing uh, the chassis once he has finished making the chassis, he then passes it along to the next person who puts on the body, okay? While she is putting on the body, he can immediately start working on the next chassis. And then the third person then gets given the completed uh, body and has to paint the vehicle. But then while the, she's painting the vehicle, or he, I don't know what that's, whether that's a she or he, um, the second person uh, has already picked up the second chassis and has started putting a body on it and the first guy's now working on his third car, all right? So they're now working a little bit more efficiently. So basically, um, we can think about that and we can think about how long it takes to produce vehicles. Now, if the time taken per stage is one minute, we can start to think that in the first stage, we spend one minute and we've got a chassis, okay? Now in the second minute, car number one has passed, uh, so by the end of the second minute, sorry, I've now got two cars in process because the chassis of car number two is completed and the body of car number one is completed. That means by the end of the third minute, okay, I've now got one completed car which has been painted up and I've got two cars that are almost, one car that's almost complete and one car that's completed the first stage of production. So that means that by the end of the fourth minute, I've now got two complete cars. And then by the end of the fifth minute, I've got three complete cars. So as opposed to taking three minutes to complete one car, I'm now getting one car a minute. Okay. So here you can say, I've, I mean, in essence, I've got a three-stage pipeline. Okay. Three stages to the, the production process of producing a complete car. So a three-stage pipeline. And then basically the, the time taken to produce the first car is going to be the time taken to complete the those three stages. That's what we call the latency. Okay, that's the word that just popped up here. Let me remove it and get it back again for you. Okay, that's the latency, the time taken to complete one um, uh, one model car. Okay, after that, I'm basically knocking out cars in a third of the time it took to produce one complete car. And this is the concept of a pipeline. If you think about a hose pipe, okay, when you turn on the tap, it takes time for the water to get through from the tap to the end of the hose pipe. But once it starts coming out of the hose pipe, that's it, you've got a constant throughput of water. And that's the concept that we want to apply to um, the execution of instructions. Because what if we could use the idle CPU components during the FDE cycle and keep them occupied doing tasks? We would therefore speed up the actual process of completing instructions. So if we think about this, all right, I've got a bit more, I've got a bit of a, a, a complex, um, uh, table here but don't worry as we fill it out you'll see what happens okay down the middle you can see I've got three clock ticks okay um, and my pipeline is divided into three stages at the moment fetch decode and execute so in the beginning when my when my first clock starts ticking okay I perform the fetch stage of the pipeline so I've just fetched an instruction I've sent the address down the address bus and the binary has been returned to me by the data bus that's been received when that first instruction moves into the decode stage I then 
fetch the second instruction. I still haven't completed one clock cycle, all right? Then as the first one moves into the execute stage, the second instruction shuffles down the pipeline and the third instruction is now fetched, okay? By the end of one clock cycle, I've completed one instruction, all right? Then, as I start the second clock cycle, I'm now fetching the fourth instruction. The second instruction has moved into the execute stage and been completed. And then while the, the third instruction now moves into execute, the fifth instruction is being fetched. And then the fourth instruction is being executed and completed and the sixth instruction is being fetched. So that means by the end of the second clock tick, because I've got a three stage pipeline, I've now completed four instructions. And then the same thing happens during the third clock cycle. So if you, if you remember latency, okay, if we're thinking about the, uh, sorry, let's re rewind that a second, okay? If we were just thinking about the traditional FDE cycle, that means we would have just done, gone one clock tick, one fetch, decode, execute, one instruction done. Second clock tick, fetch, decode, execute, two instructions done. Third clock tick, FDE, three instructions done. With this process, okay, you can see we got the latency here, the time taken to achieve that, uh, to complete that first instruction. But after that, I'm knocking out instructions, be ex instructions being executed in a third of the time that it took them to previously be executed. Okay, so this is the concept of the pipeline as um, um, applied to CPUs. Okay, we're using the idle components of the CPU to perform the previous stages of fetch and decode um, as, as we're going through the cycle, okay? So we're, we're, we're increasing the efficiency. Now, uh, obviously you can see it's beneficial because it's improving the, um, the time taken to complete instructions, but actually if you think about it, we're moving in a sequence and that ties in with um, von Neumann architecture. Sequential performance basically is enhancing the performance uh, of the, uh, sorry, sequential execution is enhancing performance, but without us having to actually go and change the structure of our program, okay? So there's no, no you're, not, you're not messing around update, changing your code, okay? So you're paying people to change your code, and as you know, every time you make a change, you introduce new bugs, and then as you fix bugs, you introduce more bugs and cost more money, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this hardware change can have that kind of knock on impact. So the next bit now to go a bit deeper is to think actually about what makes pipelining fail. All right, remember sequential execution is assuming that each instruction is completed before the next one starts, and that's not always true. Okay, and this is all to do with what the little components are doing inside the CPU during the different stages. So I'm gonna break down my pipeline a little bit more, okay? One clock cycle is now divided into five parts. I've got fetch, I've got decode in the, in the control unit, then my execute are broken down into three more further parts, okay? I've got the arithmetic and lo logic unit actually doing some the the arithmetic and logical operations that need to be carried out. Then there's a read cycle taking place because we need to read what's in the accumulator and then we need to write it to the primary memory. Okay, so I've got um, my, my execute stage has been broken down to three further stages. That means that I've got a five stage pipeline now. Okay, so here we go. All right, um, my first clock cycle is going to initiate and this is the instruction that we've just fetched. Add what's in R1 to R2, okay? That goes into the control unit, okay? We're now on second um, cycle of the pipeline, okay? We still haven't finished one complete clock, clock, clock cycle yet. Now, um, so we are where the control unit is decoding the instruction and the arithmetic and logic unit on the third cycle of the pipeline gets that instruction, okay, add R1 and R2. Now, uh, it's gonna carry out that thing. It's gonna find out what's in R1, add what's in R2 to it, and then that's gonna go into the accumulator. Now, what needs to happen next is the CPU is gonna read what's in the accumulator and it needs to then write that to the, um, to the primary RAM, okay? Now, the pink instruction, subtract R1, R2, cannot move into the accumulator. That's because what was in R1 and R2 for the previous instruction is still there. If the pink instruction moves into the, into the arithmetic and logic unit and then it try, and, the, and the AOU then carries out the instruction, it's gonna be operating on the wrong data. That means that the blue instruction and the pink instruction are being held at their current pipeline stage. So what we've just introduced is a bubble, 
okay so if you if you think about that that you've got a pipe okay with water going down it and there's a bubble in the middle basically you've got a section of water then you've got a gap and then you've got another section of water behind it okay so uh if we're now on the fifth um uh pipeline cycle okay which is one complete clock cycle because the execution is now at the end the result of r1 and r2 is moved out of the accumulator and it's dumped into um back into primary memory the bubble has moved along the pipeline okay but r1 that that instruction sub r1 r2 can't move along yet because what was in the accumulator hasn't been cleared out either okay so we've now actually got two bubbles in the pipeline okay and we've only had one instruction completed so far yeah remember that was the latency as well okay that it takes one complete clock cycle for one the first instruction to move through the pipeline now as we get onto the sixth clock line cycle uh um, sixth pipeline cycle okay the um the pink and blue instructions as you can see can now move along because the sub r1 r2 that second instruction can now move into the arithmetic and logic unit and then we can fetch the third instruction okay now um the pink one can move along okay and as you can see the bubble is also moving out of the pipeline but that blue instruction add r1 and r2 is suffering from the same problem that the previous in pink instruction had that it can't move into the arithmetic and logic unit because those existing pre-existing values in our in the registers are still there so we've now just introduced another bubble the the blue and blue um uh, green instructions are being held at their current stage of the pipeline as that pink instruction moves through the pipeline okay so you can see here how um uh pipelining okay can fail because we and it's all down to that assumption that uh that register components are going to have finished being used by the previous instruction but that's not always true okay you can see by the number of instructions being completed that it's still faster than if we just had one clock cycle per instruction okay because with that five stage pipeline the second instruction should have been completed by c10 okay so it's a little bit faster all right um so when does pipelining fail all right bubbles are created in the pipeline when subsequent operations are making use of the same memory addresses okay um holding the instruction at a particular stage prevents the incorrect values being used but you're also reducing the throughput of the pipeline okay, if you refer back to the other simpler diagram a couple of minutes previously okay so you should basically be able to talk about the advantage of pipelining in terms of improving the throughput by making use of idle cpu components okay however you should also be able to also be able to explain when pipelining can fail okay and in reality you can see how it's not you know it's not always going to be as fast as that ideal uh, thank you very much and that's it that's the end of the cpu performance videos